Decided to you know, go, go and make it official, and uh, I really love you. I love you. Can't wait to get to finally call myself your wife. Um, I know we've had quite a few hurdles already and I know more is going to come, but I can't think of anyone else I'd rather have by my side. Love you.
Friends, we are gathered together in the sight of God to witness and bless the joining together of Josh and Lacey in Christian marriage. The covenant of marriage was established by God, who created us male and female for each other. With his presence and power, Jesus graced the wedding at Cana of Galilee, and in his sacrificial love, gave us the example for the love of husband and wife. Josh and Lacey come to give themselves to one another in this holy covenant. Lacey, will you have Josh be your husband, then live together in a holy marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live, if so say, I will. Josh, will you have Lacey to be your wife, to live together in a holy marriage? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? If so say, I will. I will. And who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I. And the marriage of Josh and Lacey unites their families and creates a new one. They ask for your blessing. Would those who represent their families please stand? Do you who represent their families rejoice in their union and pray God's blessing upon them? If so, say, we do. We do. You may be seated. Would you pray for God of us all, you are the true light, illumining everyone. Show us the way, the truth, and the life. Sustain us with your spirit and be present with us today, especially in this act of solemn marriage, which Josh and Lacey are giving themselves to. May we all sense your presence here with us, as we are privileged to witness two joined together as one through the power of your covenantal love and grace. May we all be reminded of the great love you have for your church, even as you gave your life for us, and as they commit their lives to one another. We pray all these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. And the cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Josh and Lacey, you chose the scripture as the one you want to be the kickoff for your marriage. And today will be a day of many memories. The way she looked coming down the aisle. The way you felt seeing him up front. And all of the planning and preparation and all of the chaos that's gone on with COVID and all of those things. One of the things you probably won't remember is anything that I'm going to say today. <laughs> but you decided to get married in a church, my church, and so you have to listen to me anyways. And honestly, I love the fact that you decided to get married in a church, this church, and that you decided to make God a part of this. And in truth, God has to be a part of your marriage if you want it to live up to the fullest potential of what it can be. We all want our marriages to be filled with love. And in 1 John 4, 8, we're told that God is love. Not this, just that God loves or that God is loving, but that God himself is love. So if you want some love in your marriage, you need a whole lot of God in your marriage. And the scripture you chose echoes that. Today's a beautiful starting point for the love that you have for one another. And it's just that, it's a starting point. The real challenges lie ahead, and love helps us see through those things. And love sees us through these hard times by being exactly how Paul described it in 1 Corinthians 13. Patient and kind and not envious 
or boastful or arrogant or rude or insisting on its own way or irritable or resentful or rejoicing in wrongdoing but rejoicing in the truth, bearing all things, believing all things, hoping all things, enduring all things. And the two of you are going to totally mess that up. <laughs> there will be days when patience flies out the window. You will irritate the snot out of one another. And in fact, you may even come to believe that the idea that love never ends is nothing but a myth. This is where it's good to have God involved in the relationship. Because when you have nothing else, if you have God, you have a chance at love. Because God is love. It's really hard to resent your spouse if you wake up every day and pray for them. It's hard to remain arrogant or boastful if you're constantly humbling yourself before God and one another. And it's a lot easier to endure when you let God carry you. And the writer of Ecclesiastes from the scripture you chose tells us that two are better than one, that we can lean on each other and comfort one another. And then he makes a curious statement, a cord of three strands is not easily broken. So what's he talking about here? The third strand in a marriage is God. He is the third cord binding the two of you together and strengthening your bond. Great godly marriages don't happen by accident. They happen when two people make a decision to love each other with a godly love and they keep faithful to their vow to live in the love of God. And Josh and Lacey, I am certain of the love that you have for one another and the love you have for God. Like I said, you're going to have a lot of memories from today, and while you might forget most everything that I just said, there's one memory I hope you come away from today with. And it's the knowledge that as you are about to make your vows in just a moment to one another, that God is very much present in this place with you. The third word, binding you together. And may he and his love remain with you throughout your marriage. Amen. Josh. 
place this ring on Lacey's finger and repeat after me. Lacey, I give you this ring as a sign of my vow and with all that I am and all that I have, I honor you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And repeat after me. Josh, I give you this ring. Josh, I give you this ring. As a sign of my vow. As a sign of my vow. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And all that I have. All that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Josh and Lacey, you have declared your consent and vows before God. May God confirm your covenant and fill you both with grace. And now that Josh and Lacey have given themselves to each other, by solemn vows, with the joining of hands, and the giving and receiving of rings, I announce to you that they are husband and wife, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. Would you pray with me? O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of Christian marriage that in it is represented the covenant between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon Josh and Lacey that they may surely keep their marriage covenant and so grow in love and godliness together that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Josh, Thank <laughs> you. 